morning, good afternoon. Um, hello, my name is Matthew Dale um, and I'm the Roads Collision Investigation Analyst for Humberside Police as part of the Roads Collision Investigation Project. Firstly, I'd like to say how much of a privilege it is to speak to you um, as part of the festival and also on behalf of the project. I'm one of three analysts based across three police force areas, uh, with the others based in Dorset, Devon and Cornwall Police and West Midlands Police. We are also fortunate to have a principal investigator from the Rail Accident Investigation Branch working with us three days a week, who is using his years of investigative experience to assist us in our work. Now, by way of background, in June 2018, the RAC Foundation received almost £500,000 worth of government funding to pilot new ways of investigating road crashes. Now, since that time, a further £350,000 of funding has been provided by Highways England to support the programme. The Roads Collision Investigation Project, RSIP, um, is being led by the RAC Foundation in collaboration with and supported by the Department for Transport, Highways England, the National Police Chiefs Council and other national and local investigation organisations. Rather, RSIP funding is being used to develop and trial in the three police force areas I mentioned, uh, a different approach to identifying and understanding common themes and patterns that result in death and injury on the public highway. The project seeks to establish whether there is a business case for putting more resource into the investigation of road crashes, adopting the approaches used in collision investigation in other modes such as rail, air and sea, um, and safety critical industries such as oil and gas. RSIP is expected to report um, to the government by summer 2022, and insight developed from the project um, could help shape future policy making. Now, the day-to-day -day role for us investigators entails retrospectively assessing closed, fatal and life-threatening collisions from the last several years um, to ascertain any trends in these incidents and any possible intervention opportunities. Within the bespoke RSIP reporting template, the systemic AxiMap format and approach is used. Uh, this enables us to categorise areas of investigation and findings across the road transport sector. This assists in assessing any potential latent contributory factors from across this sector, as well as affirming any active factors determined by police investigators. And we attempt to make safety recommendations based on the weight of the evidence before us. By taking this systems thinking approach through the AxiMap format, we can attempt to identify and comment on latent systemic factors. And by establishing themes through this reporting, uh, potentially inform future policy development. Now, systemic causation uh, determined through these reports can, um, and often does, transcend that captured within STATS 19. This is what the RSIP investigation is trying to capture. Now, latent factors are ones which may have laid dormant for a period of time. Uh, for example, there could be a fatal single vehicle collision on a railway road where a car has left the carriageway at 50 miles an hour and sustained a side impact on wooden fencing, which penetrated the vehicle. Now, an active factor could be that the driver was travelling at an inappropriate speed for the location and consequently left the road. Latent factors could be that the speed limit for the road was inappropriate and had been for some years that the vehicle in question did not include side airbags, which other competitors uh, manufacturers did at the time of the vehicle's release, that could have had the potential to reduce injuries, and that the private wooden fence was not a dedicated vehicle restraint barrier, which instead of diverting the course of the vehicle, broke under impact and presented an intrusion hazard to occupants. For the purpose of our reporting, uh, we use the information within the internal police file to help construct our reports. This includes, as you can imagine, the forensic collision report, scene photos, suspect interviews, witness testimonies, post-mortem reports, toxicology reports, any dash cam or CCTV footage, and reports of any previous criminality, amongst other things. Externally, uh, we look online for any supporting evidence in the form of research reports, relevant articles, um, Euro and CAP assessments, etc. 
various people from several bodies, such as the Motor Insurance Bureau, Highways England, uh, FATCHAM, the Transport Research Laboratory, the Department for Transport, and highway engineers from local councils have provided useful comments to include in these reports, drawing on their experience and expertise. We also use existing Stats19 data to um, put potential contributory factors into context uh, with some software provided by Road Safety Analysis. Um, also available to us is the Road Safety Categorization System, EuroRAF, which helps us to identify any problem locations locally. Now, working within our respective road policing departments um, and observing fatal road traffic collisions as and when they happen provides us analysts with a good understanding also of the procedure involved with a fatal collision from day one and the steps local investigators and forensic departments take to identify causation factors throughout the investigative process themselves. These officers are also available to the analysts to ask questions to in order to assist in the ARCIP reporting and most officers within the Serious Collision Unit have worked within roads policing uh, for years and have witnessed the changes on UK roads over this period of time. The findings of the reports and the ASIP project are not there to infer any retrospective criminal liability, um, but rather to provide a library of retrospective factors that could potentially and hopefully influence future policy decisions. Now, our reports go through a stringent uh, four-stage peer review system in order to ensure that the value from each collision is being captured and that the resulting analysis and investigative recommendations are both evidence-based and robust. The first peer review stage is between us analysts ourselves, and this is useful because we can share knowledge on the latest information that we have found relevant to cases that we are reporting on and reviewing. Analysts are also in regular touch with each other via teams to discuss cases and best practice. Now, sometimes area experts are sourced to discuss prevalent issues with the analysts in these teams meetings, and we would always welcome additional speakers to provide us with a broader range of thoughts and opinions. An RCIP taxonomy um, to aggravate, aggregate rather individual report findings is also being developed in order to categorise any factors uncovered to assess any recurring issues um, and will hopefully provide the project at the time of the reporting with a concise list of various causation and the various systemic levels at which these can be found. As part of the project, analysts have recently been conducting interviews with officers from their local roads policing and serious collision units in order to better ascertain the issues they feel they face in their lines of duty. Uh, along with any prevalent themes they see within serious and road traffic collisions, fatal road traffic collisions. Now, these interviews are anonymised so that we can ascertain what the officers really think uh, and therefore gain the most value through their answers. Not all interviews have been completed yet. Um, however, there are some patterns emerging, uh, such as concerns over police resources um, and this subsequent shortcoming, uh, restricting a visible deterrent and reducing in the, uh, intervention rather opportunities uh, for drivers. Now, one of the analysts has been assisting the project by conducting interviews with victims and bereaved parties of road traffic collisions to understand the social costs and has also been analysing medical records to help the project understand the associated financial costs. Now, this work has been showing how medical costs can escalate as a result of a collision. And while the project hopes to assist primarily with reducing the fatalities on UK roads, it can also hopefully provide a case for reducing associated costs. Uh, various systemic issues have been highlighted since the start of the project. One such issue is the widespread availability of supposedly UK roadworthy motorcycle helmets from overseas sellers that are stated to conform to European regulations but actually do not. These obviously offer less protection to motorcyclists and can contribute to injuries sustained in a collision and have done according to some of our various reports. On the motorcycle theme, and while obviously most motorcyclists do choose to wear PPE, several reports produced have linked the lack of wearing of this clothing, while not mandatory, uh, with fatal motorcycle collisions within the three force areas. Although it is obvious to say that those wearing PPE will have greater protection from serious injury, the wearing of PPE is not noted on STATS-19 returns. 
and therefore the identification of this non-wear within the RCIP reports can hopefully identify trends and demographics within the non-wear of this equipment and can lead to targeted awareness campaigns and other measures to, incre other measures to increase wear. One aspect to come out of the various reports completed by myself and the an other analysts so far, as you will probably agree and possibly back up with your own findings, is how emerging vehicle technologies could help to prevent or at least mitigate collisions. Autonomous Emergency Braking, AEB, for example, which is being mandated in Europe from 2022. Cited in various reports so far is the lack of presence of AEB on various cars involved in collisions and whether this is due to cars predating this technology or customers buying vehicles without it fitted. Our reports appear to show the potential of this technology to contribute towards reducing UK road fatality figures um, that have in the last several years stagnated as you will know. For various reasons, AEB technology would not appear to have been widely adopted upon its introduce, introduction rather, to the UK market. And while vehicle manufacturers appear now to be increasing its presence on their vehicles, there will obviously be a large proportion of vehicles on the UK network without the system available, uh, especially given that the average age of a car on UK roads is steadily increasing. Lane assist technology, uh, especially the variant that can implement steering input, um, also appears to be one such primary safety system that appears to have the potential to reduce collisions, uh, especially in fatigued drivers who do appear underreported in Snaps19 data. So that is the Roads Collision Investigation Project. Uh, we feel that it is progressing very well between us and can hopefully give a more detailed update in due course. Uh, please do keep an eye out on the RAC Foundation website, www.racfoundation.org uh, rather, for the latest progress and re report updates to the Roads Collision Investigation Project. Thanks for listening and the project looks forward to the presentation from others during the festival period. Thank you very much.